Bitcoin. And apparently, Charlie, you're going to try to convince us that there's some people out there in government who are not spending money responsibly. What's going on? It's 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 something they're not accustomed to. I oh, really? That. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for about five or six decades, we've only had four years of balanced budgets in the federal government. So you could say that there might be a problem. Yeah. Possibly. So is it is it uh, like a mental disorder that we can solve by giving them some kind of medication or are they just never going to get it? That'd be an affordable option, yeah. I would say. I, I mean, would just like given, to. yeah. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you can just look at the numbers. Right now, the U.S. government's about $19 trillion in debt. Yeah. And that's just on our current balance sheet. And if you look at what we owe in Social Security payments and Medicare payments, it's about, it's over $100 trillion. Wow. So you could say that they haven't been um, completely honest with us and they yeah. haven't been that responsible with how they're managing our money. Okay. So, do they, I, I know every single election year, I hear both parties offering all sorts of solutions to this. Mm -hmm. Is anyone offering a decent solution? A few, yeah. So yeah. for a few decades now, several organizations have been trying to uh, push Congress to make the right decision uh, and, and put through a balanced budget amendment. It was first proposed actually in the 1930s. Thomas Jefferson actually was a big proponent of establishing a constitutional amendment, which would constitutionally mandate and bind legislators in Congress to make uh, the amount of money that they take in equal the amount of money they spend. Right. Now, as you can see, Congress doesn't like having their hands tied, right. even and especially by the Constitution. So what several organizations have done, they've decided to Rather than going through Congress and push through this amendment, they're going to go through the states. <clears throat> and you can do this through a part of the Constitution called Article 5, where if you have two-thirds of states call for amending the Constitution, you can hold a convention. And through that process, you can actually amend the Constitution where you add an amendment to the Constitution. And what they're looking to do is add a balanced budget amendment, which would say essentially that the federal government cannot spend more than it takes in. And about 27 states, tw sorry, 28 states have actually signed on to one of these compacts. How many states are we needed to do this? We need 34. That's 34 states. states. Now, yeah. the worry is that I hear from some people, if you have a constitutional convention, things like that can get out of control. All sorts of things could wind up on the docket. And Lord knows what kind of a country we'll end up with. Yeah, so a lot of people have this fear, <clears throat> and they call this a runaway convention. Yeah. This is where they come with one idea or one, int one uh, publicly spoken idea, and then they come with something else. The good news is that you cannot amend the existing Constitution. <clears throat> if they wanted, if 34 states agreed to balance the budget, and they went into this convention, and then they decided, mm, maybe we don't like the Second Amendment or the First Amendment, you can't do that. That's a constitutional convention. And that's actually the convention that actually started the U.S. Constitution. Right. This is an Article 5 Constitution, and you can only add amendments. That's one uh, thing to rest our fears. Another one is there is – there are actually – when we talk about a balanced budget amendment, there are actually three different ones that are out there, pushed by three different organizations. And two of them actually have enough wiggle room where you actually could do that, where you could – add an amendment that wasn't technically um, being publicly proposed. But one of them is very strict, and they say that if you do not talk specifically about, about a balanced budget amendment, then the whole thing is canceled. They're very strict about that, and they realize that the danger of an open convention uh, could have. Right. So one of these organizations actually has a pretty good agenda uh, for solving that problem. That's a shame that we'd have to move to something outside like this to get something so basic done, something we should have to, I mean, it could be done without an amendment to the constitution, really, if mm -hmm. we had, if we elected people, which is on us that sure. actually cared about balancing the budget and only spending what they took in. But here's part of my worry though. And you've even seen this. It's in, you know, you, Wyoming Liberty Group is in Wyoming. Wyoming has a balanced budget amendment, but let's face it. There's always ways to rig what's happening in the budget process so it appears balanced, but it's not really yeah. balanced. That's a good. That's a very good point. Yeah. So we're one of one of uh, several most states actually that have a constitutional amendment mandating us balance the budget. But we can actually wiggle out of that quite a bit. I mean, you saw. I mean, 
we kind of had a giant shortfall uh, this year and are supposed to in the next several years. And what we've doing, we've basically just shuffling around a lot of savings we've built up over the years rather than balancing the budget. So it's not a perfect solution. Um, but one thing I like about one of, um, one of the organizations that's pushing it, it's, a com- it's called the Compact for a Balanced Budget. They say explicit, they have ex- explicit instructions over how we would actually achieve this. And it looks like, it looks pretty bulletproof. I mean, but it really, you would really have to see it be put into practice to actually see how it's done. But you're right. There are always ways to wiggle out right. of these sort of ideas. And I, I, I have some my ideas on my own um, that don't, that would be a constitutional amendment, but would be much more straightforward. Uh, than a balanced budget amendment because well, it's a very vague idea if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it is. And part of what I'm thinking about here is the way that Congress likes to shuffle money and hide money and say, well, we're not really spending money there. I mean, this whole idea that something can be, well, it's just off budget, you know, Charlie, sure. it's just off budget. Therefore, uh, we don't have to say that we're that much <laughs> in debt because we just decided to take this off budget. And it's even worse than that. Imagine if we got a balanced budget amendment and all it said was, you can't spend more than you take in. Yeah. Well, to a congressman, you could just say, why don't we just take more in, which means raising taxes. Right. And they could continually promise more and more goodies and more and more benefits as long as they can just keep raising taxes. That's one of the, that's one of the concerns I have with well, these ideas. Here's another one for you. Cause, and you, you know the way these people think because you've got to deal with them all the time. Mm-hmm. You poor thing, you. I stay in a padded <laughs> cell where I don't have to talk to them anymore. But okay, uh, y- you have to worry then that they will estimate that we're going to take this much in, therefore we can spend this much. And if we fall below the estimate, well, you know, we didn't estimate enough. You see, these are the kind of tricks they pull. Yeah, yeah. So that's what Wyoming does a lot. Of, that's what Wyoming does a lot of times, and that's what state governments do a lot of time. On paper, they have to say, they have to say, oh, we have to balance our budget. But if it doesn't work out, well, too bad. Tough cookie. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's another big issue, too. Uh, there are some things you could do. You could say that if it does come in, if revenue does come in less than spending, then you need to make, then you could have provisions that say then these uh, spending cuts have to be uh, sent in automatically, as you could, that would be one way. Uh, one of the compacts actually says that if the budget actually starts to approach breaking that that uh, budget ceiling that they've established, then the president has to issue uh, automatic spending cuts. And if Congress doesn't rescind them within 30 days or propose ones of their own, that they automatically go into effect. Yeah, so we saw what happened just recently with that because President Obama had this idea. It was his idea for a sequester. And then when Congress actually did it, when it actually happened, both Congress and the president were screaming bloody murder. What a horrible idea. And actually, they never really did cut that much money. It was very little. It was, I mean, we spend tens of trillions of dollars over, over decades, yeah. and they cut $1 trillion. And even that was too much. And then, yeah, like you said, in another few years, they rescinded the entire sequester. Oh, yeah. And let's remember, that's $1 trillion over 10 years. Oh, yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. And and by the way, they delayed it for the first year. So oh, it was God. even less than, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it makes you wonder whether everything that goes on in Washington is a fad. For one or two years, it was being fiscally responsible was a fad. And now that's gone right. away. Now they're proposing these huge increases in military spending to deal with ISIS and the Middle East. I mean, you, there's really no long-term priorities. And well, one of the, I'm go, sorry. Go, no, go, go ahead. Well, I was just saying one of the benefits of a balanced budget uh, amendment would it, that it would actually force Congress to strategize and actually plan for the long term and come up with actual priorities. But do we want to spend this much money on the military? Do we want to squander our children's future with entitlements? I mean, right. you actually have to budget this way. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I got some things coming up. I got to let you go, but you're writing extensively about this. And where do people find you and your writing where you can? They could go to wyliberty.org. Wyliberty.org. Look for Charles Katibi. Charles, informative as always. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you.